every single one of us has coping mechanisms, all 8 billion of us wandering around on the planet. If you're somebody who thinks you don't have coping mechanisms, then you might want to check that, that kind of point of view. But, um, you know, everybody's got something that we turn to, whether, uh, whether they're healthy coping mechanisms, unhealthy coping mechanisms, it's really, it really doesn't matter. Like it's just, it's just understanding fundamentally that everybody's got them. And the purpose that they serve in our system is to try to cope with or deal with what emotion we are experiencing, what's happening in, in our internal world in a way that allows us to either process or avoid the particular emotional experience that we're having. What are coping mechanisms and what purpose do they function in our lives? Yeah, coping mechanisms, I mean, predominantly I work with people who struggle with addictive or compulsive coping mechanisms. So what I mean by that is that um, all addictive behaviors, whether we're talking about substance use or shopping, gambling, internet pornography, cell phones, social media, um, they're all basically extreme coping mechanisms for underlying issues. So um, I turn to this particular way of dealing with things in order to cope with the emotional state that's in my system. So this is where they're saying that the, the, the alcohol is the solution to the problem and not the problem itself comes from, right? It's, yeah. it's fundamentally understanding that the, that the alcohol is the solution. The problem is what's going on underneath the surface. So coping mechanisms, every single one of us has coping mechanisms, all 8 billion of us wandering around on the planet. If you're somebody who thinks you don't have coping mechanisms, then might want to check that that kind of point of view, but um, you know everybody's got something that we turn to. Whether uh, whether they're healthy coping mechanisms, unhealthy coping mechanisms, yeah. it's really it really doesn't matter. Like it's just it's just understanding fundamentally that everybody's got them, and the purpose that they serve in our system is to try to cope with or deal with what emotion we are experiencing, what's happening in in our internal world, in a way that allows us to either process or avoid the particular emotional experience that we're having. Yeah, you bring up a great point because I want to think about. Uh, I'll, I'll talk from my own experience, obviously, because that's you know my experience, what I can deal with. Um, Post pandemic, I, I, I just think I've never seen more people have their eyes open to what uh, they thought was their coping mechanisms, whether it be their gym, their church, uh, whether it comes down to their uh, freedoms that they, they you know thought that they shouldn't be infringed upon, and all these things. When realistically, all they really were is like you know jumping out of the reality for a half an hour at a time or three hours at a time or, and just saying, Oh, well, I love sports. I love watching my hockey. I'm like, Nope. Coping mechanism. Because you know, if you're a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, you get to get out of your miserable little life of being a Toronto Maple Leafs fan for three hours <laughs> and watch your team lose. You know, that's exactly how that works. And that's a wonderful coping mechanism that I, have. I use fear. Fear is a wonderful coping mechanism for me to not sit in my emotion I can belittle anything. I can make fun of it. You know, I think some of the greatest comedians in the world are the saddest people in the world, you know, like, yeah. and they use, uh, you know, the, their sense of humor as their number one go-to, um, you know, and some of them are really great, really sad people. I mean, like, if you look at Robin Williams, I think you could see that Robin yeah. Williams used humor as a coping mechanism. For sure. uh, and it works, it works until it doesn't. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the... You know, the, the big thing that, that, that activates those coping mechanisms really is, as we talked about in the last conversation, is, the, is this state of fear that comes into our system. So as soon as there, there is a fear of an emotion or a fear of um, something that's going to happen, which is fundamentally connected to an emotion, then your, your system goes into this, this way of trying to deal with it, which um, is strongly linked to a, a behavior pattern that we call a mode of behavior that's basically just a part of your personality that's kicking in to try to cope with a story that's active underneath the system. And there's, there's a number of different ways that these, these coping mechanisms kick in. They're, they're um, designed to try to either avoid something that's happening, to confront something that's happening right in front of us, to you know, just kind of get around it, to freeze in the moment and not, not deal with it, to become really compliant with what's, uh, with what's going on in the circumstance. But um, the, the, the principle of all coping mechanisms is to try to just deal with that emotional experience that we're having in a way where we're trying to self-soothe in a lot of in a lot of the situations. Um, and most of the time when we get into like the addictive and compulsive kind of coping mechanisms that are unhealthy, it's self-soothing in a really unhealthy way. And can you give us an example? I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm led to thinking that, you know, when you're emotionally triggered or you're activated, um, I'll use food as an example because mm. I think it's a really big one that everyone can yep. really kind of more 
across the, the spectrum relate to. Uh, we all use food as a coping mechanism, some more than others. Yeah. Um, ice cream, you know, like I, or beer. I want to have a, you know, a beer at the end of the day. You know, uh, I deserve a treat after working out today. You know, any of these things that come down to um, us not sitting inside that moment. Because I don't want to sit in that moment of hurt or anger or despair. Uh, I want to deflect. And it's, yeah. a, it's a knee-jerk response for me. So I say, ah, and then there's endorphins in cheese or ice cream or coffee, uh, caffeine. Any of these things that we use as stimulants or to be able to, to change our state rather than just sitting inside that uh, emotion first and processing and then healthily moving past that through. So I thought maybe you could speak to that. Yeah. So, I mean, again, there's there's, there's nothing wrong with having coping mechanisms. We want to be really clear on that, right? Um, a lot of people, when we start talking about um, coping with emotions, they start thinking that emotions are the problem and, you know, I've just got to stop my emotions then I won't have to cope with them. And that that's just not mm-hmm. the case, right? There's um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with with distract and avoid, which is the, the primary coping mechanism that we try to teach in the beginning of any kind of behavior change. So, when you remove the the, the 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 primary coping mechanism, let's just say I'm working with somebody who's who's, who's an alcoholic, okay, uh, much like myself. So when I uh, first stepped into recovery, you removed my primary coping mechanism, which was alcohol, yeah. um, and now my system now is left facing everything that's going on, right? Facing the fact that I'm afraid that I've got I'm filled with guilt and shame. I'm sad. I'm lonely. I feel disconnected from everything. And you've removed my coping mechanism. So now my system starts scrambling, trying to find another coping mechanism to help me deal with that particular emotional state that I just can't handle. So in the beginning, when we're doing this work, we we talk a lot about distract and avoid. So um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with distract and avoid. It's a perfectly um, useful skill to have. You know, if there's a, a situation where I'm I'm not I'm not capable or I'm not able to sit with how I'm feeling, mindfully working through what's going on in my system, then damn right, I'm going to distract and avoid, right? It's just the way that we distract and avoid as long as it's being done in a healthy fashion so that um, we're not kind of consuming ourselves with this extreme all or nothing black and white way of dealing with things in one particular fashion. So, you know, when I first sobered up, for example, my, my, my primary coping mechanism, as I said, was alcohol, marijuana and amphetamines. So those were the three substances that I used to cycle through. When you remove those substances out of my out of my coping mechanisms, the next thing I went to was nicotine because I was smoking, right? But I um, I was smoking probably like fifteen cigarettes a day. But as soon as you remove those, my nicotine use went to about forty a day, so it became really extreme, right? So I was smoking really heavily for a couple of weeks before I realized, like, okay, this is going to kill me faster than the the alcohol and the drugs were. So, you know, I I, I came to the, the the decision that I was going to stop that. So I stopped that, and then I got into working out. And I was working out morning, noon, and night. Like every single opportunity I got, I was in the gym. And I went from being, uh, you know, um, quite, wouldn't say portly, shall we just use that expression, to like becoming extremely uh, slim, extremely skinny. Uh, I had relatives that thought that I was sick because of how much I was working out. It becomes such an extreme way of me coping with things. As soon as I felt an emotion, I'm just going to go in the gym and work out on this. I'm just going to do cardio. I'm just going to do something to get through it. So after a while of doing that, I realized, okay, this is extreme now. I need to do something else. Well, then the next thing I discovered was chocolate ice cream. So I would sit at home and just open up. A t- I was going through two, three, four tubs of chocolate ice cream a week. So the, pur- the purpose of me telling you that is that until we start to realize that all of these things are just at coping mechanisms for what's going on underneath the surface, we constantly bounce from one to the other. Mm. trying to find that extreme way of coping that just numbs or shuts down that emotional experience that we're having. Hey guys, first of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed the content. This particular chat was filmed as a part of the podcast series to support my good friend, Chuck Basti, and all the work he does as a mental health advocate at Chuck's World of Infinite Mojo. If you want to see the full podcast or just see more of what Chuck does on his social media platform, check out his YouTube channel that's linked in the description below. When it comes to what's going on here, I am on a serious mission to make this platform profitable. Why? Because when I do, I am committed to making sure that every single penny of profit that's made from this YouTube channel goes back into serving the community that needs it most. So, as always, please like this video, leave a comment below, and make sure you subscribe to the channel to get all the latest content available right here at The Liberation Place. 
Come join us for our live online conversations every week. I'll put all the links in the description below and let's get the word out there about living the life you want to live, not staying stuck in the life you're currently stuck in. Hopefully, see you soon.